Hi, everyone, and welcome to uh, this week's template tastings. I'm joined by educator Kate Quinn, and she's going to be showing you a variety of templates from the Westerly design line that create a clamshell effect. We have some templates that are called clamshells, but we have many other templates that can create a similar type of motif, and she'll show you a lot of the versatility that you can get out of that. Um, I We are going to be doing a giveaway, so I'm going to share my screen here. If you haven't yet, head over to our Facebook page, and um, I've put a link in the chat, and this is where you're going um, to leave a comment for us. If you leave a comment, that'll enter a chance to win one of the templates that'll be featured in today's broadcast. And please share. So we have eight shares already. Share this everywhere as many times as you'd like on all the platform, you know, share, share, share. And for every 25 shares we get, I'm going to also be giving away some more goodies. So um, and then let's just see here um, on, on our website. If you just type in the word clamshell, you will see all the templates that Kate's going to be featuring today, plus more. Um, so, um, and Kate, are you are you there? I'm Perfect. ready. All righty. So let's see what we can do with clamshells. Okay, you guys, so excited! I adore clamshells and. I think a lot of people do. It's one of the most popular videos that I have out on YouTube, and it has been far and away the most popular since it uh, launched. So we're going to just share a couple of the key tips and a few different ways that you can create clamshells and why you might want to choose one template over another. So one of the most versatile ones that we have that I think is a good size based on the fact that I can literally control the whole thing with one hand. I'll put some backing behind it so we can just see the markings really quickly. Always we have a little shadow with our light, but let me just tip my camera slightly so you guys can really, really see that very well. This has multiple different size traditional clamshell. And when we say a clamshell, what a clamshell is, it's half of a circle. So right here, at the anchor where we're going to put our foot in there, the needle would line up with this line, with this line, and as you sew over it and the hook would end right here, your needle will be right in line. So with this, you do have to move each time. If I'm doing successive four inch clamshells, I would sew one and then I would have to reposition it and move it over. One of the things I like about this size is this is pretty big. So these are going to quilt up fast and that's really, really useful. This is your reference line right here for the bottom of the clamshell. And it's going to sew out for this particular one at that four inches wide. Let's go ahead and use this one first. And we'll just show you how easy it is. I'm going to work in this direction. I could work clamshells any direction, but I like to control the ruler with my left hand. So if I know that I'm strictly going to be making clamshells, I may orient the sandwich in a way that I can hold this most comfortably. My spaces do fit the clamshells, the ones that I've made on here. However, know that I'm gonna also show you some tips that as we sew clamshells, it's quite common that this might um, tighten up the fabric, right? So this is a part of a circle. If I were to sew a straight line, it's all going to pull right into the line as far as quilting. But if I'm sewing a circle, it's going to pull in this way, this way, this way, and this way. So you get more draw up when you have this curve than you would if you were sewing a straight line. All right, so let's start. We're lining up this reference line right on there, okay? And I'm just going to start sewing. I'm at the bottom. As I come up to the top, I find that pretty easy. Get your fingers up in your clamshell. I'll put a few tacking stitches at the beginning, and then we'll go ahead and start sewing. Notice that I have to kind of push that way, right? We're getting ourselves out of the ditch. And then once I get to the top, I'm going to pause for a moment here. This is where I start to go, wee, and fall right off of the cliff. 
So right now I'm on this line and as I come down, I want to really think about keeping the foot touching that template the whole way down. And I love that I have a really strong stop position right there. It's absolutely clear where I am stopping for that template right there. Let's get you down just a little bit so you can see better. All right, so we've sewn one. Let's go ahead and pop it over. We would line it right up on the reference line, get my fingers close to the edge. We never want to be holding back here. We want our fingers in this clamshell. This is nice because I can only control one clamshell at a time. If I had a longer clamshell template, which I will show you later, then I still recommend only controlling one at a time. Let's talk about math. If this is four inches across the base, then this is half of that, right? So four inches, the center to the outside is two, and it's the same for this. So the height of a clamshell that is a traditional circle size, the base size is whatever it is, and then this distance, the height will be half of that. Okay, so this is 10 inches, so there's two inches left. So that's gonna bring us to the top, right? And I'll line this up right on my little reference line, and I'm gonna be right at the top here when I'm done. Perfect. So I'm gonna turn it just so you can see how we're going. Okay, they look great so far. In fact, I'll go ahead and just come back this way, again using the hook, and I'm gonna line this right up on the center. This line should go right through the center. As you're starting out and you're learning and you're teaching yourself, I think it's okay to put maybe some visual reference lines sometimes. So I can just put a little line like this. And when I line up, I can see exactly what I need to see. This line is perfectly centered now right on this. And as you get better and better, you won't need to worry about that, but this is kind of a nice way to help you train yourself. Here, I'm pushing a little bit with this hand to get out of that ditch again, get myself up to that top. As I get there, I can just adjust my finger and then give some pressure on the back if I need to. When you're coming in to touch this next clamshell right there, make sure you're watching and don't sew below the line, right? It's very visible if you do. Try to stop right in the existing stitch line and then we'll scoot over and we'll line up for that next one. And again, this is just something so simple. If you wanna even do something maybe a little quicker and easier, you can have maybe an index card and you can just line it up like this right there on your line and you can see right there that we're aligned right with the center there. So that's just something that you can do to help you. This line right here should touch the top of this clamshell below. This was the reference line that we used on the bottom when we were lining up. Well, that same line is going to touch the top of these clamshells. So we have a lot of great reference lines that help us keep our clamshells lined up as we get going. So right here, when we stop, I want to show you something before we go on. Let's turn this just a little bit so you can see what I want you to see. We are using offset clamshells, right? So let's come back just a little bit. We need a bigger, wider view. Okay, we want to get you a little bit more of the whole picture so you can see better. Okay, we're doing offset clamshells, right? Each one from the row above is in the center of the one below. When we started this, we were at the bottom of the clamshell, and when we start this one, where will we be? We'll be at the top, right? So it's going to give us half this time, so we'll line that up, and we'll be right on this reference line right here. And if we're not, like if that was my seam and it's a little bit off, I'll even show you real close. It's slightly off, so I'll just give it a little smush and line it up, and that'll get me right to this end position so that I can start my next one. When I'm at the top of a clamshell, at the top position, 
all I need to do to align for the next one is just move the hook, right? If we, if we have no hook left, we would just move that to the next position. All right, always trying to keep it in front so you can see best. Let's just go ahead and we'll quickly sew a few of these just to get us over to that other side so we can show you how quickly that these can actually be done if you need them to. Okay, I'm right there in that position, stopping, lining up this top line right with the other ones so that everybody is aligned, and off we go. Notice how my hands are working together. They're basically staying right in line with each other. I don't want one going out in front of the other. That would be a sign that the one hand is pushing harder than the other. And that's when you tend to get some of this rotation. We want these two hands to stay at the same level. Okay, so right here, if we're not perfectly on our seam, we could do a little smushy to get us there. And the reason why we might experience that draw up is because of that curved quilting, right? So this will be our last one. Let me just show you, this will be the last bit right here as we get lined up. And we'll just sew right across. We're really close to uh, the crosshair, the uh, cross mark right here. This should be that quarter inch. It looks like it might be just slightly smaller than the top line. And that's just probably me and my measuring. Okay. Keeping that foot touching the whole way, making sure that he's touching. And right here, I want to stop right at the line with no gap. Okay. All right. So we'll get lined up for the next one. So you can see that this, this has the potential to quilt up pretty quickly. If I was doing a larger quilt, I would go ahead and switch hands so that one direction is on one side and the other direction is on the other side. That would allow me to kind of go back and forth and not have to turn the quilt per se. Okay, so right here, let's go ahead and finish this up and then we'll also tie it off right here at the end. Okay, so we'll just tie that off. All right, so that was pretty quick, right? So yes, we had to reposition that template many times because it's a single clamshell, but the alignment is actually very easy and it's very easy to control just that single uh, clamshell at a time. The other benefit of the mini multi-arc is that you have many different sizes. So I can usually find whatever size I need to balance the design, whatever that space is that I needed. So this is what we have right there as we started out. Always can use any additional reference lines. It's totally up to you. But remember, these are all going to go away. Okay. Perfect. And we had a couple questions, Kate. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. Sure. One of the questions was, how do you use clamshells as an edge to edge on a long arm? It seems like you would have to be upside down. Is that question? Uh, yeah. No, I, I probably would hold it like this in front of me and pull the machine across this way. Um, a lot of that is going to depend on, you know, do I want the clamshell on an angle? Am I trying to make it go this way? If I'm trying to go this way and the poles are on either side like this, I would set the boundary and I would align here and I'd sew down as far as I could. And then I would try to stop at a visible stop spot. And then you can move up to the next row, the next row, the next row going this way. And you can always travel by coming up to the top. We'll, we'll show you that in a minute, how you could use the top as your spacer to go along. And then I would do it that way. But I mean, if I'm doing a king size quilt and I'm doing edge to edge clamshells, I think they're, they tend to be smaller than that. And I would want something that would take up a little more space. I mean, I think this is pretty big, right? To leave this unquilted, that's about as big as I would want in terms of clamshells for edge to edge. So and we have, I don't, I think go ahead. That's good. And then we had another question. They asked, okay. do you have stable tape on both sides of that mini multi-arc? I don't need to. Sometimes I do for this, but if I did it on this, you know, what am I trying to do? It's symmetrical. It's the same, right? If I use one side or the other, the lines, I want the lines to be really clean and visible. You can see like if we were lining them up right there, 
I want these lines to be against the fabric so there's no shadow. So I wouldn't, on this particular template, I wouldn't bother putting it on both sides. I don't think it's useful. I would put it close up into the clam. Like don't put it right here in the middle. It needs to go up near this edge where you're actually holding. So each, you'll see each one of these, I've got it so that I can stick my fingers right on it. Perfect. Okay. Anything else? That is it for now for questions. Oh, but okay. I will announce. Oh, I should say. So we are at, uh, we got some more comments coming in and I'm refreshing. We have 22 shares, folks, on our Facebook page. Three to Woo! go. Good job. Keep it up, you guys. Yeah, another giveaway. And be sure to comment on the Facebook page as well. That'll enter you for a chance to win one of the templates today. Perfect. So Sarah, can you show the clamshell sampler set up on the screen real quick? I'm gonna use two yes. pieces and then let's get everybody oriented to that. Okay, let's go clamshell sampler set. Okay, so five piece set. And we call it sampler because you get a variety. And again, Kay might mention this, you may notice one of these, this one is quite familiar. If you have the sampler set of six, this is included, but these templates you can get in a longer version. Those are also gonna be visible on our uh, website. Like here's another, uh, it's, it's, a, it's pretty much twice the length. Uh, so the sampler, you get all the varieties at half the length. So really good value. I like the fact that I can try a lot of different sizes. So I did buy this. And to me, you know, there's two, so I can do two at a time before I have to shift. If you're working on a really big project and you don't necessarily want to shift as many times, those longer ones offer you that benefit where you can just keep going for a longer period. On a domestic machine, I think this particular set has a lot of versatility. And again, I can control it with my hand. I'm gonna line up two of the units. This is the same CC2 that would be used in the sampler set. And this is included in this grouping of clamshells. It's, it's, you can get it either in your sampler set or you can get it in this collection. If I match this up with one of the others, this is the squat oval right here. And I line these up. Notice that these are the same in terms of this bottom base size. So we're gonna use these two together to just create a fun design at this point. If you're going to do this, I'm gonna recommend that you do the smaller size first and then the bigger size. And I'll show you why as we go. So we just have a small little space right here that we're gonna put this design in. And I think just to keep them all the same direction, I'll spin this around just so I can align this on the bottom. We're gonna do that same thing that we did before. We'll put our needle right in this little intersection right here. And you know, you're know, you seeing that my clamshells are perfectly fitting into this space. I can always make them fit. You know, If the space is not perfectly measured for the clamshell, what I can do is start in the middle and then just work towards one side and then whatever I get, it can be even Steven on the other side. So this is different in terms of the height. It's not half but the base is going to be the same. Once again, I wanna tack off a little bit at the beginning and I'm holding into the clamshell just like I was before. This is a little bit more of a gradual size, so there's not as much difficulty when you're coming down right there. You're not getting as much of that, but right in this area, that's where you wanna make sure you're keeping the foot right next to the edge right there. Notice that this little piece is also on that reference line, that template reference line when you start. Those little cuts on the hook are also useful for aligning the template. Okay, so three units. This is nine inches wide for this section right here. So that's gonna get us evenly right to the end. Okay, should get us right into that little hook right there. Now, what we'll do, I'll just flip it onto this side so you can watch. I think it's too hard when it's behind. And I'm gonna come back with this deeper clamshell. So it's just got a little bit more height and it should line up exactly the same. The same reference line here and that little hook right there is also still on the reference line. But you can see right away, you're gonna get more depth. So this is kind of a fun one to use together. 
I really enjoy these because you're basically creating this little swag here. And I think that has a fun design element right there. Come all the way down. And then if I need to adjust my hands, I can use second hand on this left side to help kind of dig me out of my little ditch right there. Okay. All right. And then let's go ahead and do the next one. Get it lined up right on the reference line. And this little tick right there would be also on the reference line. Okay. So we're going to do a little cheat. We're going to come back to the center position right here. We're aligning the needle right in the middle. This is now going to give us the right height for us to travel up because this is the position where the template would connect, right? But we have to go this way first, right? This is the center. So if we're offsetting, remember that the offsets are still going to hit in the middle. All right, so let's put this one on. We'll line it up the same way. We're using this on this chalk line. That's getting us straight. And then just to show you on the other side, I'll, I'll let go for a second. I wanna flip this around so that you can see we're gonna line it up the same. This reference line where the needle would align is now lined up right at the top of this. Okay, so this is our shallow one I have to go that way first. I have to close it. So there'll be a little bit of double stitching on the different ends, right? Getting to that center position. And then we'll come back and we're right in the middle where we left off, right there. And then we'll start going the other way. Okay, right into the center position, looking for the line and then shifting over. Okay, again, it's starting to draw up a little bit more because we have more lines. So I'll show you a little workaround for this last one. Okay, right there will be in the center. And now I gave a little tug on this to kind of get it lined up and we'll be right at this midpoint right here. So this position right here is not the proper position for the taller clamshell. We would actually be up here. So I'm gonna show you, we're gonna come back to the center position because that's where we know that we would be touching right there. Okay, all right, so let's get our next one back out. Pardon me guys, I am gonna plug my phone in, my camera in, just to make sure that we don't lose feed. Sarah, can you still help me? hear me okay? Yep, I can definitely hear you. Okay, you guys, sorry. I'm gonna have to make sure that I just keep myself right near the speaker so you can hear me really well. And Kate, we did have a quick question. Which uh, marking pen are you currently using? Boheen and Fonts and Porter. I love these. I have a bunch of different ones. I have these on my website if anybody is interested. Perfect. www.fabricatedquilts.com. <laughs> nice, I will put that in the comments. Okay, great. So I love them, I think they're really useful. So. What I want to just double check in real quick is if I was sewing this, see how this one is taller and this is the middle, right, of this squat oval. So this one would actually be up here a little bit taller, the same distance that you see here. That's why I sewed back to the center because the bottom of the clamshells are going to match up perfectly. And now you can see I can sew the top and then I'll go back that other direction. So this is a little bit of playing. I don't have to do it this way, but if I can get that rhythm and that path, what it means is that I don't have to constantly cut my threads. I can just sew the whole design without cutting anything. So let me show you where we're at. We've completed this little double right here. We've got these nice doubles right here, and now we're ready to just line up right in the hook, uh, that hook right there. And then line this up right where we're going to come in. And this should be aligned right on the center of that design. And it is. So I'll just adjust, making sure I'm going to get right to the top. And we'll sew this one right in. Okay, there's going to be a quiz after this. Okay, I hope you're paying attention. Once I get these ones lined up right here, 
I'm going to go ahead and ask, what do I do next? Right? So think about it. I've completed the second row. We're going to end at the top of this particular clamshell. Okay. All right. So let me show you what we've got. And then you're going to help me figure out where do I start? Where do I put my tool at this point? Because we are not at the bottom, but we are at the top of the tallest clamshell, this position right there is the bottom of this one right here. So we actually don't have to move anywhere. We can literally just take this, put it right on there, and just line it up, and we'll be ready to sew this row. So again, working the shorter clamshells first and getting the top right here aligned and then we can just go ahead and sew. So here we go. Right to the middle. Okay. Adjust my hand so that I am holding the clamshell that I'm going to be sewing. I don't want to leave my hand back behind there where it's not really doing anything useful. I'm lining this up and I'll sew this one in. gets me right to that center position right there. Go ahead and close that. Be right in that anchor spot. And then we're ready for the last row. And don't you think that looks really elegant? It kind of has more of that jewel swoop look like, you know, fancy. I like it fancy. You guys know that. All right, let's put this last row in. We are using the center line to line up right there on this position. Each time as we go across, we're using that as the reference. And then this should be aligned right with the center. And these little lines that go across are aligned right with the tops of the clamshell. That's how we know that we'll be in the correct position and be able to get our bottom to touch right at the correct spot. So right here as we come in, we're exactly right on this reference line, right where we need to be and not sewing too far down. So I'm looking at this line, I'm lining it right up and off we go. Okay, stopping right at the bottom here where all of the other stitching is, and we'll finish this last one. Now, I'll show you something really quickly. If for some reason I look over right here and this isn't aligned on the line, this is the place where you would want to make the adjustment. Right there is where I would make a very small flattening on this curve so that now I can correctly come in to the bottom and touch at the exact right spot. Never want to adjust your clamshell down here because this is a single point where it comes in. There's no space for adjustment. If I scoot the bottom over, you're going to get a small square flattening instead of the nice little point at the bottom. At the top, I can shift over to the right or the left just slightly, and it makes no difference. No one will be able to see that if you just make a small adjustment. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll tie off. I'll just put a few tacking stitches right in here. So this is an example of a benefit of a longer clamshell number one where you can align across the tops because you have multiple clamshells so the visibility of alignment is much easier when you have maybe a few more of them plus we have also the benefit of having a few different sizes which lets us to make a little bit fancier a little bit more elegant kind of a swaggy look like that which looks really cool i think okay sarah did you have any questions at this point um, let's see. Not yet. Let's see. Is there? And we did have a question come in and it was more like, can they, it was about Facebook and YouTube. This is being aired on both broadcasts and there is no way to look at the comments from both in one platform. You'll just have to have two tabs open or two browser windows and shrink the screen so you can see both. Um, because 
there are definitely different questions coming in and different comments. Um, and I want to let folks know there is no coupon code for today's broadcast. Um, it's just a nice free, lots of great education um, from Kate. And you can view all the products that we do feature today by going to our So Steady website and just typing the word in clamshell and you will see everything and more that Kate is showing today. And we are getting up to more and more shares. So uh, let's actually take a quick refresher on that and see where we're at let's loading and all right we're at 28 shares boom so we <laughs> will be giving away one of our slightly imperfect um, sketch pads so we will announce all the winners at the end of the broadcast but boom there's one if you keep sharing and we get up to 50 i'll give another one away so i'm going to comment on that slightly imperfect so that is an amazing pad that has really big paper and i literally have 15 of those that i got as a you know gift from so steady and i'm not cursing it i'm flipping that over and i'm using those big white pages to do a lot of designing for you guys so that pad is actually a really great tool and i have found it to be very valuable so i hope you'll enjoy it as well it's really a great product Perfect. Thank you. And I'll show a screen. So you can get, um, if you want to get the not imperfect one, we have the sketch pad and design guide. So it's the same paper. If you purchase the $29 kit, it also comes with um, a pen and some stitching line discs as well. For the giveaway, we're just going to get the pad, and um, but we are sending those out. So you get this great drawing surface here. I'll blow it up here. And you have this great reference right here. So I know for me, it's like, okay, I'll be doodling and using my stitching line discs and I'll say, oh, what was I using? And if I'm not careful, I'll forget. So this helps you, gives you a little inspiration here and then gives you a spot to kind of remember, okay, what was the first step I did? What was the second step? And like Kate said, just flip it over. Now you have this big piece of paper for that'll just do double duty. All right, so I'm gonna show you just a few additional ones that we've got. So this one is CC1. And this is a two inch and a one and a half inch on here. Um, so I don't know, can we see that very well? That's not looking like it's got a lot of shadow on there. So I like having lots of great sizes, right? It's so cool and it's so easy to use. So what I thought we would do with this one is we'll kind of show this idea of how you could make a rainbow clamshells. Okay, so we're, we're gonna play with that. So go with me. When we do this, we have to make the biggest ones first. So this is one and a half, two, and let's see, three is too big. So we'll use one. We'll use our little one. So let's make our twos because those will be the biggest ones for this. And they'll fit in this space. So here's a quick quiz for you. So Sarah, you can help me get um, see what people's answers are. This is referencing back to the information that we put out at the beginning of the class. This is a classic template shape. It's a half circle. This is going to sew out at two inches. So what will be the height, right? If this is, this is my mini arc, I'll just show you real quick. This is the two inch size. You can see that they're perfectly matched up. How tall is it going to stitch if this base is two inches? All right, folks. Yeah, put those comments in. How wide will it be from the uh, up to the mountain top, the curved top? <laughs> Look, I have three. I can do three of these units without having to move anything. Oh, I love it, right? So you're seeing little by little different benefits that you might have between different ones. Notice how I'm holding back there. I'm going to release and I'm going to hold forward where I'm sewing. Always try to control the clamshell where you're actually sewing, okay? All right, let's do one more. Notice that my little line right there is perfectly lined up on that white reference line. So this one I believe is eight wide and it's gonna be enough um, to fit four of these units across end to end. So we'll just put one more in there. And then we're going to be at the bottom of this clamshell, right? So just like we did before, I'm going to reinforce this travel method that I was telling you about. If I want to keep this area nice and clean, I find it better to travel to the center of the clamshell. 
right there, I'm in the center. Then if I move into the bottom of the hook and I line up everything, then I should be perfectly lined up here to sew forwards and then backwards. I gotta finish it up. So real quick, before I continue, I wanna line up the back side as well. Okay, I wanna make sure that, that both of them are lined up. And let's see, I think I need to maybe come over one more stitch. I can tell because I'm not lined aligned properly. I couldn't get this line or this line to line up. So that was just a little sign, right? So close this one. Coming all the way to the boundary, wherever that is, whatever stitch boundary that you have. And then we'll go this way and we're lined right up in the center. And then stopping right in the existing stitch line, looking inside your foot right there and just making sure that you're in this clamshell line. Then I can just scoot back and you'll see this one will actually take me all the way back and I can use all of my reference lines. I can line up right in the middle. This is really the big benefit of the larger clamshells because you can really, really see exactly everything as you have a line of them. So we can get all three of these in. Watch your finger right there whenever you're on that side. Right here, this guy, he can be a little troubling. Okay, so we'll just ignore him for the moment. I'm lined right up in the center here and my top lines are lined up as well. So here we go. Using all of those reference lines, the value there is it is keeping us lined up. Here, we're going to end at the top. So instead of us having to stitch back up to the top, we are already at the top. So now we can just go ahead and realign and we'll sew right to the next one. I'll just do one more row and then we'll start working these rainbows. I don't think we need to do quite as many rows as I have set up. So again, checking my alignment, maybe giving a little smush. This one is lined up and this one isn't. So as we get to this one, I'm gonna help show you how we can adjust right here at the top to get the best position to line up these clamshells. Okay, tucking into the middle. Don't go down below. Right here, I'm gonna stop right at the center and I'm gonna shift just a slight amount there to get me into the proper position. Okay, so I can't necessarily make all the adjustments at once and we never adjust at the bottom. So right here, make sure that this is lined up right at the top and I'm right already corrected from that previous one. I'm right in the center now and now I can sew this next one. Okay. Okay, we had a question come in. Yeah. Someone asked, is a stitch regulator helpful? Uh, yes, it can be, absolutely. I would never say that it's not. I use one on my long arm for sure. Um, most domestic machines haven't had that available, right? I mean, it's not a common uh, tool that is on a domestic sewing machine. There are a few now that do have it. Bernina has had it for a while. Janome has it now on the M17 uh, Continental and it does work very well. And they also have a ruler foot that goes with it as well. So yes, it's definitely a possible um, helpful addition for people, but also there's a cost. So you, you can't, I can't weigh that for you. You have to say, yes, that's worth it or no, it's not. It's up to you. And I'll actually, um, I'll share a link. We also have our precise pedal power. So if you have a sewing machine that is not compatible with any sort of stitch regulator, the precise pedal power will help um, your machine if it doesn't have any speed regulation whatsoever. And Kate, your machine has that, I'm sure. Yes? No. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. See? It has Kate. It has Kate there. regulation. There we go. So this is something um, here. Let me pull it up really quick on the screen. Here, I'll share it right here. So um, our precise, oh. Um, here we go. Precise pedal. So this here is for something, especially for older machines, like if you have a sweet little featherweight machine, you know, this is great. I have some older, I have like an older Kenmore. So, you know, I, however hard my foot presses is how fast it's going to go. So this right here, it goes on the foot um, pedal itself. And then this little leg will lengthen. So the longer this is, you can push the foot pedal down less 
and thereby go slower. And if you shorten this, you'll be able to go faster. And this is something where you can just floor the foot pedal and then you don't have to think about both how hard your foot is pushing and how quickly your hands are moving while you're quilting. So it takes one of those factors out of the equation. And I know it helps me a lot. Yeah, so if you, I've, I've had yeah. good reports on that from people in the field. You know, some of the machines, like, for example, the Baby Lock Jazz um, has a nice big throat, a 12 inch throat, but it doesn't have the ability to regulate your speed. So having that mechanical action on your foot control can really make a big difference for people to yeah. find your sweet spot. So Perfect. I've made a couple of reference lines. If I was doing this for myself, I probably wouldn't, but I want you to be able to see what I'm lining up. So I've just marked the center essentially of these clamshells. So this line here should be the center of this one below. So when we do this little rainbow, we're using this CC uh, one, which is the two inch on this side. This is one and a half on this side. And then we have a little one incher that we'll put on there if we have time. So I want to make this line up right in the middle there. I don't want to start from this position. I've got to kind of get this lined up. Let's see right there like this, right? The reference line is right there on the bottom. So it should cross right where it touches at the bottom. Right here, what that means is that I would have to kind of move it down a little bit so that I can get this uh, natural arc in there. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna scoot this over just a tiny bit so we can kind of figure where we want that, get everybody lined up. So notice how it, it only lines up one at a time. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll just come back down. And then we'll scoot over. Okay. And we'll come over to this position over here. And we'll line up this one. And he's lined right up on the center. Uh, did I line it up correctly? I guess I did. Yeah, I did. Sorry. <laughs> that happens. It happens to everybody. So we'll come down and we're going to line that up so we can cross over with this next one. And then go over. It's just going to put like a little bit of additional detail in there. So that right there is that center position where we have to line up. So we're, we're putting this needle reference line, the one that cuts right across there, right on that center position. And we have to kind of keep all the sides aligned. So here, I'll move it down just a little bit. So we're lining up the top of those clamshells down below. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get that alignment right there. Oh, that looks so much better. Why did I mess up before? I don't know. There we go, right there. I, I'm gonna cut it, you guys. I, I'm having trouble with my visibility here. Hang on just a second. Should be a little bit taller than that. So I'm just gonna stick it right on there like this. Oh, there we go, that's what we need. Okay. <laughs> And while okay. you reposition real quick, Kate, uh, people are asking, and most of them are correct. So if it's to that previous one, the um, the other side of it, where it's two inches from valley to valley, what is the height of the hill? Oh, yeah. Did they get it right? They did. And oh, the answer is did. you present it for them. <laughs> you guys are so smart. Yeah. That's how one, it is. One inch, right? One inch. Right. One inch. And, and it's not that you have to know that you could figure it out, but that's really only true when we are using a circle. It's not true if we're using other sizes, right? It's not going to always work out. So this is what I was trying to get us, but I wasn't doing a very good job. So I hope you'll go with me here. I'm going to line this up right in the center. And the way we need to line it up on these other ones is at, as if this was straight across. So I'm going to do a better job now. This is what we're looking at. We should have this uh, quarter inch echo. And then right here, I would just keep my straight edge handy. When I'm sewing across, notice that the foot here is touching. So if I sew, I can just sort of check on the back that I'm lined up. And then this one should go right in the center and be lined up right on that straight reference lines, just like that. I'm glad I started up at the top there. We're going to ignore those. 
Okay, so then we can come straight across. We'll line this one up again, getting him right on the center, lining this middle line up right with the center position. Okay, so get down to our bottom reference line. I needed one more stitch and then we'll come over. You can do this with any number of different clamshells. You just wanna think about what your relationship would be. So what I was planning is this is a one and a half and then I was gonna put a one inch little baby on the bottom. Now for some people you may not wanna sew that much, right? But look at how cool this looks. This was way better than my first attempt, right? <laughs> Oh, you guys, you guys see everything. I can't hide anything from you. And I don't want to. It's okay. We learn from that, right? We learned that this is how it should be adjusted and not the other way. Okay, so right now, if we want to go up to this next row, how do we get there? Let's use our straight edge. We're going to come right down to this bottom edge right here. And I'm going to come up and I want to be in line, but in the center position. I was trying to line it up right there and I want to line it up over here. So let's just make a little visual mark so we can see what we're lining up, okay? And then this way, I think it'll be a little easier for us to try to do what I was wanting to do. Okay, let's scoot up a little bit. Um, we have to go up enough that we can put the half clamshell on there, right? So the foot here is touching right there, just like it did down here, the foot was touching. And we'll line up our little clamshell right in the center position like that. And I think we need one more stitch right there. There we go. Okay, so then we'll come down to the bottom. He should be able to touch the clamshell below. And then we'll just scoot over a little bit. And again, it's touching right there. And then we should be able to line this up right on this center position. And he'll sew all the way around. Touching right there, stopping, and then we'll just come over. We only have to sew enough so that the foot is touching there on the back side. He's touching this curve, and then we'll line this one up right in the center. And this is again on the same center line. And here we go. And Kate, we had some really sweet comments. They said we that uh, our, our viewers love the mistakes that are made because they know they will probably do the same thing. It makes them feel a little bit better. <laughs> okay, well, and thank you. Thank you for not expecting me to be perfect. I think that is a really hard standard for most people. So, I, you know, I'm just like you. I'm learning. I'm practicing. I'm getting better every time. And, and I... I think it's okay. I think it's okay to let ourselves be in that position, let ourselves learn and let ourselves, you know, not have to be so precise. So right here, we've got the foot lined up. We're right on this center position that we've already marked. So what do you think about this little rainbow? I know some people are gonna say, wow, that's a lot of work. And I would too. I think it is a lot of work, but I am willing to do it because I like how it looks. So as we come in, we're checking that position here, it looks like I have maybe one too many stitches, so I'll just go backwards. I just want to line this up right on my center reference line right there, and that'll get us right into this bottom section. I'm going to turn it, and then I'm going to show you how we'll connect for that last one. And then the pieces that are, you know, irregular over on that other side, well, that's, that's a design option. I'm not sure how I lined those up because they sure don't look the same. <laughs> but I love this one. I think it looks awesome. Okay, so we're at the edge right here. If we want to line up on this one, we're gonna need that center reference line again. So let's take our, you know, I use this a lot for marking. I use my uh, 12 inch arc, cause it's so convenient. It's the perfect size and I can use reference lines and quarter inch lines and everything. So this is that center position to get me to that corner right there. And I'll show you how we'll travel on this top line to get aligned for this one. And then I'll go ahead and mark this one. We can actually sew all of these because the fact is I, I can bond bond time these other ones and just take them out later. All right, so let's come up. We're gonna come up just to this reference line, which is the clamshell below. And again, this is the line where we'll travel and we'll have the foot touching 
just down below. Okay, so we'll line this up. Looks like I need maybe one stitch backwards to get aligned. So I'm aligned here and here on the center of this clamshell and my foot is touching the reference line. Okay. So right at this position when I'm touching this top clamshell, there's about five stitches to get me over to this other side and then realign each time. Okay, line them up and then we'll just come across and then put them right back on and get them lined right up at the center. Oh, I love it. I love this rainbow. I think it looks so cute. And you can do as many of these as you want. With that multi arc, you can do one, two, three, four, if you wanted to. Okay. All right, so we're, we'll connect the dots here and we'll tie it off. We're almost done. Are you guys tired? I have 10 more minutes. They told me I could have an hour. <laughs> I mean, if we need to go a little over, that's okay. And no, we have we have 10 more shares to go and I'll do another giveaway. So oh, you guys, come on, share. Get on that Facebook, share it, share it again. Annoy, you know, your friends. Just be like, sorry guys, this is for free stuff. And then just, <laughs> just send it. You know, they'll know it's only like on Fridays and probably Wednesdays and then maybe only just once a day. But and Kate, I don't know if we can take just a half a second. We had some questions regarding stitch regulation versus speed regulation. And then we also had questions regarding the BSR and the number 72 Bernina foot. Can you maybe talk a little bit about BSR? Yeah, let's let's do that at the end. Perfect. Sounds okay, good. We'll we'll kind of control our discussion right here and then we'll I'll get some other fabric and we'll do something else. Nice. Okay, so we've shown you, let's just kind of recap really quick. We did mini multi arc and that was this one up here, but it could be any size, one, two, three, or four inches clamshell size. And then this one was two different sizes. And in fact, in the sampler, we actually have a shallower one that we could do if we wanted to, to put another swag in there. This is also in that kit. It's very flat, but it's a three inch wide alignment. So I'll set this one there and let's see, where's our other one? Oh, here, it's way back there. It's hiding from me. So this was the one from the sampler set. And then we also used the squat oval one with that which is, I don't know, where'd he go? Here he is. Okay, so we use these three to make the swag, or these two, but we could use three. And then this one, you can use any size um, clamshells that you want, and you can change the spacing. Like, it's just based on whatever you choose, but you're just gonna line up in the center of each clamshell. And in, it, in a kind of a funny way, you know, that has its own little look there too. So we could always add that in, or we could put another circle in there. This one's kind of flat, but the one inch would be a quarter inch away from this right here. So you'd have three rainbow lines in there. Okay, so this one was CC1 on um, both sides. And then we're gonna do one last area, and that is based on the six inch uh, heart or the three inch circle. And I'm gonna show you why you might consider that some type of a half circle is an option. The difference here is that these are open as opposed to one of these where the bottom is got the template plastic. So that allows for some different designing opportunities and that's why we're gonna show these real quick. And that'll be sort of our last design for the day. So this space is seven and a half inch square, and that's based on the one and a half inch unit of height that you would get with the three inch circle, right? So there's your three inch clamshell, and your height is one and a half. So we'll do the first row, and the way you would do it is you're gonna put your foot in first, okay, into position on the bottom of wherever your reference line is. And the half circle markings on here are going to be the alignment marks. And I'll do one row with the circle and one row with the heart, just so you can kind of see the difference. So make sure that you can see your reference lines, line up the back right with your foot and your needle. And then we don't really have anything out here. There's no lines or anything, but it's all gonna work out. I'll show you. 
but this is my three inch circle. So this is the three inch clamshell. Okay, and then we'll do one more. And this time I'm gonna show you why we might want to have some benefit here with this open area, okay? So I'll make the whole clamshell, and the reason why I want to do that is I want to know where the boundary of the clamshell is. Okay, so let's do something crazy. The ruler foot is my spacer, and now I want to stop down here, so I'll go ahead and double stitch that area and get to the bottom. Okay, and then I can just align it and I'm aligned right here on the center line, and that's the half, okay? Now, right here, if I wanted to make that kind of curvy thing, I would have to fudge it a little bit. Something like that, right? Now we're at the top, let's align here, and let me show you how we're gonna align this on the other side if we were gonna do one more, okay? This alignment right here is aligned at the top, right? So we're aligning that. And this alignment right here at the middle of your circle would be aligned right there. This is how we're going to get that stagger and that offset. And again, if we want to do any kind of designing in here like this, I mean, I'll just be kind of crazy. We'll just do something a little random. Okay, we'll go up one more. And then we'll come back. Okay, and then I can get myself right to the bottom. And then I can move over and I can line up again, right in the center, right here. And then we can do another one. So this one, as long as we can find our way back, that's all that matters, right? So I can fill in anything. If I don't have that opening like we did with the other clamshells, we don't have this space open, then we can't do that. So that's just a design option and that's giving you information about why you might choose one type of clamshell or another. Another example here is, you know, you could just use this as a spacer, your foot. And you can just put any kind of fills in there that you want to and use the ruler itself as a movement tool to get you up to the top. Okay, so now we've done just this one thing. I won't cut it. I'll just take this off and then we'll use the heart. And I want to show you that the heart is also a valuable opportunity for you to do some clamshells with as well. A clamshell, as we said, is a circle. We already talked about that many times. I'm going to put my heart up here and I'm going to put my circle up here. Okay. This shape right here, this is a six inch heart and it will fit in a six inch square, which means that sewn the width across, this is the widest point. It's six inches and it's six inches tall. Well, this part right here, that's a three inch circle because that's half. So if I lay this on there, you'll see that the reference line is the same right there. You basically are going to line it up at this half mark and half mark, and it's the same. So one of the things that I like about using the heart is you have a really strong hook right there to tell you where to stop, and you have really great alignment marks on every side. So let's just go ahead. We'll just do one more row of this, and we'll talk about the alignment that you can use with the heart. So right there, we're lined up right there. Here, this would align right at the top of this clamshell below, and then we can sew. And again, we have this opening right here. So, I mean, we could literally put something in right there. We could just maybe do some like little beads or something like that. Having that circle in there, that clamshell, is preventing us from going awry and getting outside of that boundary. 
I think my bobbin is getting low. It's sounding a little rattly. So again, lining this up and we're looking for this to line up right there as well. So we'll do one more. And we'll just do like a little yin and yang here. And that'll bring us right back. It's like a little ice cream cone. Okay, and then you'll hook that into your foot. And I'm gonna line this up parallel because it looks like my, my line's going a little bit inside where it should. And then I can just fudge whatever I need to right here. Sometimes on the end, when you have a partial like this, if you don't know what the design is gonna be, you can chalk the whole clamshell in and draw in whatever design that you want and then just cut down here and fill in the lines. Because sometimes I can't exactly envision how I could make this over here without the whole thing. So if I draw it in, then I have the lines and I can just follow them. And that would be a way that you could sort of finish up the little edge detail to create whatever you wanted. Now, I know those are kind of busy, right? I wouldn't do a different one in every one, but I really think this would be kind of sweet. This one I think has a cool look, this one too. So what we offer with our templates is always the possibility right, of something interesting, fun, new, different. You don't always have to do the same old thing. My machine is telling me different things. It's talking to me right now. So hopefully that was fun for you guys. This is pretty much where we're capping it, but we just really wanna show you that you have an amazing variety of options to get different types of clamshells and different looks. So hopefully you'll find that enjoyable and I wish you the best. Happy quilting. Perfect. And then I have some winners to announce. Um, before I do that real quick, I'm just going to put a link in the chat. If folks want to learn a little bit more about the BSR and how so study works with that, with our tables, I'll put a link into the product on our page. Um, unless there was anything else you wanted to mention, Kate. Oh, no, I, I, I just wanted to conclude our clamshell portion in case we want to use this content later. So um, what we, what I'll talk about real quick, let me grab some fabric, some scrappy fabric, and let's talk about speed regulation when you're trying to do this without a stitch regulator. Okay. Um, I'll do it on white. So it's a little bit more visible. My thread is blue. Okay. I just had a class this past weekend. I think it's interesting how many people will still ask me what stitch uh, number, how, what stitch length should I put my machine on when I'm free motioning? Right now, my feed dogs are in the down position. So if I don't move my fabric, I'll just show you, I'm just going to sew, nothing will happen. My feed dogs are not going to move my fabric at all. So in ruler work and in free motion, if I don't move the fabric, the fabric will just stay in place and the needle's gonna stitch in the same exact spot. So what I recommend is I'm gonna set my machine right now to medium and I'm not gonna move for the moment. I'm just gonna go ahead and just press my gas all the way, okay? So that's, that's a little bit fast. If I press my gas all the way, I would want it to go a tiny bit slower than that. Okay, so I'm gonna test it. So I'm gonna just find the nice sound that I want. Okay, that sounds good to me, right? That doesn't make me anxious. It's maybe I could even go a tiny bit slower, but that sounds good to me. When you are sewing, if you're piecing, you already know how fast that you wanna sew. You already know that. So you wanna go ahead and find that sound and then go ahead and press your gas all the way and just move smoothly as best you can. Just practice that and practice some little loops. Oh, my bobbin's out, you guys. Ha! Okay, I think that's a sign from the sewing gods that it is time to stop. <laughs> Well, that works. And I put in the link to the BSR uh, cut out in our table so you can watch that. And if you do have more questions, Kate, I'm sure they can reach out to you direct. You can even call us at So Steady or go to your local Bernina dealer and just ask them to show you what that's about. Yeah, um, and we got winners. 
So let's do that. So our first, so we have three giveaways. Actually, I better check and make sure we didn't get more than that. Because <laughs> if we did, we better. So we have three giveaways. Uh, two folks are going to get our imperfect uh, sketch pads. And those winners are going to be, we have Renee Burgess Bolton as well as Sandy Gay. So congratulations to you two for winning the Imperfect Pad. Email us at info at so steady and to claim your prize. And I'll even, there we go. Email us uh, your name and your address. We can get that out to you. And today's date, please, so we know which broadcast. And then the grand finale winner is Kathy DeBoer. Congratulations. You have won one of the templates that Kate featured in today's broadcast. Email us your name, address, which template that was shown today that you would like, what thickness you need it in, and of course, today's date. And that wraps it up, I think. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Happy quilting. We'll see you next week. Thanks.